Hey, what's up, everybody? Today we are looking at my manga collection. This is over 200 books, I believe. And uh, it also includes a bunch of collectibles. So we'll just go over everything and see what I have as of now. This is a, you know, a multitude of things collecting over the years, things I've been gifted, things that I've kind of found randomly. Um, so let's just go through it and see what we have. Starting off with the top here, this is a 3D printed Pochita. Um, so I have three of them. Chainsaw Man is one of my favorite series. So I think this is, it gives it kind of like a flair, <laughs> gives it some symmetry. Uh, uh, there we go, symmetry. <laughs> but yeah, we'll just start at the top here. This is your Meshi from Yu Yu Hakusho. My Yu Yu statues were a gift from my friend Nardi. So shout out her. This is your Meshi from Yu Yu. Forgot what brand this is, but I might be able to post it on the screen. Uh, here's Kuwabara right here, and Kurama, and then of course Hiei. We'll just move him out of the way and keep going. This is a sheet provided from uh, a trip to Japan that my friends took. Um, I have a couple things on the shelf from that. This comes from a gacha machine. I'll show you what I got from it in a second. Okay, second from the top, we have Tatsuki Fujimoto, 17 through 21 and 22 through 26. This is a collection of works that he did before Chainsaw Man. This is just a bunch of like random short stories that he made before Chainsaw Man. And overall, it is uh, pretty damn good, actually. You can definitely see some of the inspirations that he puts into Chainsaw Man from this, where like some of the art looks very similar. Some of the characters kind of resemble certain characters like Makima or uh, in the new chapters, Asa, I think. Next up we have Bakuman. I have yet to read this. I just got this from Half Price Books. Uh, it's basically about some mangaka and uh, that's all I know. So we'll keep that one short. Okay, next up is Bleach. Uh, you guys are gonna be disappointed, but <laughs> I uh, just bought these recently as well to start reading. Uh, and I'll get to why I haven't read these in a while and anything I haven't read, I'll definitely explain. Um, but overall, I haven't started this yet. It is what it is. <laughs> uh, I'll get to it eventually. Uh, I do have it collected for that reason, but we are not there yet. Are we? Hmm, are we there? No. All right, so next up is Blue Lock. I have yet to read this. This is in recommendation from one of my friends, Steve. Shout out, Steve. This is a uh, soccer manga that looks like it gets pretty action-packed. I have yet to dive in, but looks good, as you can see. Half price books, shout out half price books. <laughs> Getting them half off, you know what I mean? Uh, but yeah, I'll get to that eventually. Next up is Chainsaw Man. Of course, this is, as you know, as you saw before, this is one of my favorites. And I think uh, Tatsuki Fujimoto is one of the, one of the more interesting mangakas out there. I feel like his work is kind of unique in the sense that it's a little bit more raw and silly and written in a way that it's kind of, kind of leaves you surprised uh, at the end of like certain turns, twists and turns in the story. Um, obviously, things that happen near the end, which I call the end around book 11, when the books kind of stopped, that was kind of the first arc, or the first, uh, not arc, what do you want to call it? The first saga, the first set. And uh, it's fantastic, dude. It's one of the better uh, mangas out there. If you wanted to jump into manga, that's a good place to start actually. Um, I'll put some panels up as we're going through as well. But uh, dude, you don't know, you don't know heartbreak until you read this, okay? Or I'm not gonna guess it that much, but I will say that it is very fun. It's got some silly themes. The story about Dingy finding his way and you know, his simple desire of like wanting to kiss a girl and stuff evolves into something more meaningful and it absolutely leads to big things that happen. So if you don't like it by like the first five volumes, I can kind of get it, but also, Give it a chance, make it at least a <laughs> book 11, I don't know. Uh, this figure here is a Mafex uh, Peter Parker from the Spider-Verse movies. This was a gift from Jaden, my brother. Shout out Jaden. Sorry. Um, next up is Die Dark. Die Dark is by Q uh, Hayashida. She made uh, Doro Hidoro. And this is a, so far, a shorter series than Doro. As you can see, Doro is a little longer. It's actually longer than this. This is just what I have collected. Um, but overall, this series is a pretty funny story. It's a kind of like a comedy in a way, but it also does get into like some badass moments with the main character and some of the characters he kind of runs into. But overall, the story is 
just weird. It's got some, I mean, their ship is like a dog and to leave the ship, they go out of the butt of the dog. It's very silly stuff, but it's, uh, it's funny. It's charming and you should definitely check it out. Die Dark is awesome. Uh, next up is Dan to Dan. Dan to Dan is actually getting an anime soon, which I'm looking forward to, but this is basically about aliens and ghosts. It's kind of like the main guy uh, doesn't believe in ghosts while the main chick doesn't believe in aliens or something like that. I, I might have it backwards. It's been a while since I've read these four, but uh, yeah, this is a great series. It gets kind of like perverse, obviously, like most mangas do, but um, it is actually really fun. It's kind of fast. It's, the battles are amazing. Like the fight scenes are, are sick. Um, you should definitely check it out if you're interested in anything like that. It, obviously powers and such, they evolve throughout the series and it becomes more than just a, you know, ghost versus an alien thing. Here's some more. And then Deadpool Samurai. I kind of got these because this is when I was like first starting to collect. I didn't really know what I was getting into. I kind of just like, oh cool, a, you know, a Japanese version of, you know, Deadpool. There's like different, you know, other, other Avengers and stuff in it that are d directly related. It's basically about Deadpool starting his own Avengers basically in Japan, like a, a Japan wing of, you know, the Avengers or whatever. Um, or just, you know, a group. I, don't, I forgot what they call it. Sorry, I'm out of touch a little. <laughs> but overall, it's fun. It kind of like references other other mangas and such, like uh, My Hero Academia and stuff like that. So it is cool to see that. But overall, it's something if you just like to have like little fun, quick stories, it's okay. Next up is Death Note. What's weird about this series is I started collecting these three. This is the, uh, the black editions. They're actually pretty sick. You know, they're fully black. They're all blacked out. The thing about these is that I read the first one and then I stopped and I'll get to that in a minute for the thing that's consumed my life. So I stopped reading this because uh, my friend Evan, shout out Evan and Jay both suggested that I watch it and just get it over with and kind of, <laughs> they were begging me to check it out and I finally did. It was okay. I watched uh, the anime and I think I'm still gonna read these. That's why I still have them. But overall the anime was good up until the big event and the halfway point. Anything after that was kind of dumb to me and I really didn't like it. But that first half, that's, if they just ended it there, man, that would have been quality. Uh, next up is Doro Hidoro. This is a story about a, uh, a world with sorcerers and um, the main guy, Kaiman, 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 uh, is cursed and they're trying to kill enough people to find who cursed them basically. And if they kill the right one, then they're kind of like, you know, whatever. Obviously there's a world of, you know, different sorcerers, different people. There's like assassin types. There's all kinds of stuff going on. This one is by Q Hayashida as well, who made Die Dark. And uh, this is, this is kind of the thing she got big for, uh, in my opinion. And it's also got a series on Netflix if you want to check it out there. But overall, this series is pretty cool. I still need to continue it. I'm, I think I'm about on book seven-ish, but it, again, been a while since I've read that. But we'll continue. This is DRCL, Midnight Children. This is actually really cool. I already put me on this one. This one is a kind of a reimagining of the Dracula story um, of Bram Stoker's Dracula. And it's such a unique take on it. And it makes him actually this gruesome beast. And there's all these effects that happen. And the, the art in this story is amazing. It's one of the better uh, artists, as you can see, like Shinichi Sakamoto apparently made the art. And the art gets juicy, brother. The art gets nasty. It gets gruesome. And as you can see, it gets into some body horror. It's very, very gross at times. And yeah, overall it is an awesome series. I can't wait to continue it. Um, Elden Ring here, based off the game, obviously. This one is a comedy book, believe it or not. This is, this is a weird one. As you can see, it's kind of like this naked dude who, you know, starts the story off and is literally like, you know, talking about how he doesn't care about how like, you know, some of the NPCs are talking to him and he just like blows it off. And he's kind of just like this comedic, just a comedic story about a player or a guy who's like living in the Elden Ring world. It's pretty cool. Uh, funny story, there is another one out. I have yet to collect it, but if you guys are interested in Elden Ring at all, I definitely recommend it. They go over some of the, the main characters in there and it's, it's pretty nice. Uh, next up is Fire Punch. Fire Punch is also by Tatsuki Fujimoto. Uh, Fire Punch is weird. Fire Punch is sick. This is kind of what started Tatsuki Fujimoto's uh, run. He kind of finished this before Chainsaw Man. And 
This story is so good, dude. The, the art is great, obviously. Fujimoto has a very unique art style and you can kind of see it, some of the characters blending in here of his art style. And it's basically a story about how this guy, Agni, I believe his name is, he is perpetually set on fire because another blessed burned his village to the ground, basically. And this man can regenerate. He was basically feeding people since there's no food. He was feeding them by cutting off his body parts and feeding it to them because he would re just regenerate it whenever he could. So a blessed, there's all these like blessed people who have these abilities and you kind of like go through this world kind of seeing other blessed people and he's out for revenge because obviously another blessed fucked up his town. That's the gist of it. But it is really good. It is uh, only eight books. So it's not even that long really. But if you wanted to try it out, I recommend it. Fist of the North Star, of course, this is a classic. I don't really need to say much about this, but uh, I kind of got this because I kind of wanted to collect some of the classics. And uh, obviously, you know, classic art style, classic punchy punchy, you know. He's basically the dude. <laughs> he's that guy, you know what I mean? He's like, he's the guy, like he walks into the town and people are scared. It's very like stereotypical old, you know, manga style shit. Frankenstein, I have yet to read this. I collected mostly, uh, most of Junji Ito's stories. I have yet to read this yet, but it looks cool, right? Am I right? Look at that, looks cool. Uh, next up is Goodbye Eerie. This is a uh, one shot by Tatsuki Fujimoto. I realize I have a lot by him, okay? Don't judge. But this story is really good. Obviously you get to see, you know, the same art style going here. Uh, his one shots are great. I feel like they kind of cover a pretty solid story within a short amount of time. And overall, uh, they get actually very, very emotional, dude. Like they have, a, he has another one about two Mangaka who are uh, kind of drawing and it be, turns out to be like a really tragic story. No spoilers, but it's really good. Uh, I forgot what the name is. I'll put it on screen as well. This is a card I got from Barnes and Noble. And it was kind of like during a time where Chainsaw Man was launching, Jujutsu was kind of on its way, uh, Demon Slayer, you know, all that stuff. So it's just a weird card thing. I don't even know what it's for, but I was like, oh, it looks cool. I'll put it on my shelf. Uh, here's some more stuff from, you know, figure arts, pamphlets and stuff from Japan, from the boys, of course. Okay, next up is Goodnight Pun Pun. Uh, this story is tragic, super depressing. Uh, <laughs> this is a, uh, it's a weird story. As you can see, it has the outline, which I love this about some of the spines of these books. This one actually connects and makes the main character. Um, this is by Ino, Ino Asano, I believe is how you pronounce it. So uh, this is a story about a, a kid named Pun Pun. This is what he looks like. He doesn't, I, in my opinion, I don't know if this is ever told about, but uh, he, he doesn't look like this in his story. Everybody looks normal but him. And I think that's kind of just to put the emphasis on him as a main character and kind of make him stand out in certain panels. He is the main guy. And uh, in this world, he is basically just a young kid growing up. And that's kind of what the story revolves around. It's basically him getting older, uh, falling in love, finding, you know, getting past his like urges and uh, it leads to like dark places. And, you know, it overall kind of leads to no spoilers, some depressing content. Uh, there might be a little hope in there, but overall it is a sad story. It's not meant to be a, a fun story. And it's very grounded in reality and some of the urges and thoughts you have with new people, with old people, with uh, family members, you know what I mean? It kind of dives into all of that. And it's very, very deep. And I, I love everything about this story. It gets a little perverted here and there, obviously, because, hey, gotta get, gotta have your porn, you know? Gotta have some porn. But uh, overall, this is a phenomenal story with phenomenal artwork. Look at that panel right there. That's incredible, incredible. Good stuff here. Uh, definitely recommend it. It is only seven books. They are kind of, they're not pricey, but they, you know, obviously they get up there. You're trying to collect them all. But uh, overall, amazing series. I read this front to back, loved it. Okay, next up is Gaio. This is a Junji Ito banger. It is uh, a disgusting book about stinky fish. It's, about, it's, a, it's a book about fish. It's a fishy book about disgust. And it gets very, very brutal, very disgusting. It involves a fish that leaves a stench in its path and basically destroys an entire village. And there's many disgusting things in it. I don't know if I can show everything on YouTube, so we'll just leave it at that. But overall, Jinji Ito is the man. If you like horror, obviously, um, another good one. I read this front to back, loved it. Uh, Hell's Paradise, this is another newer series, kind of. 
relatively new. This is about Gabi Mara the Hollow. He's an assassin that's about to be put to death. But you find out that like, not to spoil anything, but he was in love at one point and he wanted to live for that. But he was sent to this place where, uh, with all these other like inmates and stuff, where uh, they are going to this creepy haunted, if you will, paradise. That's what's called Hell's Paradise. There's monsters everywhere. And I, I recommend it for sure. It also has an anime out now. Still need to check it out. Um, but as you can see, not super far. Not super far. Hey, hey, who doesn't read? I don't read. I'm just checking. Uh, this is I Am A Hero, Onibus. This is about a, uh, a mentally unhinged manga artist that basically gets, you know, into a zombie apocalypse. And he's kind of like psychotic or I don't want to say psychotic. He might have like another condition, but bipolar, something. He has some type of condition where he's, he might not be all the way there, but it is a pretty cool story. Uh, as you can see, not far. Hey, hey, guess what? Not far, brother. Um, but overall, it's pretty cool. You should definitely check it out. Okay, this is Jujutsu Kaisen. Obviously, if you if you know, you know, this is kind of like one of the newer ones that if you kind of kept up with it, you know, you'll know. It's very similar to, no, not, I wouldn't say very similar, but it it has three protagonists, you know, a girl, a guy that controls dogs and the main character who is kind of unfortunate um, and kind of like super strong. Uh, there's Gojo, the man. Uh, but if you know, you know, this show is great. This book is great. I've watched the first season entirely. And then uh, I think two years passed and then they came out with the second season or one year passed, whatever. And then I forgot everything. So, hey, that's cool. Don't check it out maybe, I don't know. Uh, here's Liminal Zone. I haven't read it yet, but look at the book. This is a Junji Ito. Of course, another Junji Ito banger. So, uh, have yet to read it. You know what you're in for when you're getting into Junji Ito. This one is Mob Psycho from the creator of One Punch Man. This series is fantastic. It is officially done, finally. I don't have all the books because I think they were still publishing them, but the anime series is fully out and it ended on a, in my opinion, a great note. I thought it ended a, a pretty reasonably. Uh, some people didn't like the ending, but overall, the story's fantastic. It's about this kid who's misunderstood and he's kind of like, quiet and to himself and it leads into like obviously he's one of the the stronger psychics out there so he just like you know there's a lot of moments where he kind of goes past 100 that scale is kind of like his power level almost once he goes past 100 100 shit goes down you know the fight scenes in this are amazing if you're familiar with one punch man you already know that this is one of those series that are like the main character is meant to kind of be played as a not an idiot but kind of like a uh a passable guy, and then he turns into somebody that is super strong and kind of helps people out, much like One Punch Man. This is the Rare Chopper Hidden Dissectable variant. Super sick, shout out Nardi. Um, now, we're getting close. We're getting very close. I'm not gonna say why, but we're getting very close to why I haven't read a lot of these books. You know what I mean? You can kind of piece it together now if you think you know it, put it in the comments. All right, uh, let's go. Next up, Mob Psycho's there. Monster, I picked this up recently. Uh, I have yet to read it, but this is one of those things I kind of got at half price books or half off. And uh, I hear it's really good by Naoki Urasawa. And uh, he's kind of like one of those, They and they are kind of like one of those big mangakas. They've made other series, I forgot which ones. I'll put it on screen. But I can't wait to dive into Monster. I, I'm sure most of you guys know if you guys are watching a manga video, then you guys probably know what it's about. I just haven't dove into it, but I'll put some, some panels on screen as I'm talking about it. Um, oh, okay, uh, next up is Mushoka Tensei. Then My Broken Mariko. My Broken Mariko is by Waka Hirako. I have yet to fully get into this one too uh, for the next reason. And it is a story about a uh, girl who had a friend and they were both kind of like brought up through a life of abuse and troubles and one day one of the girls finds out that the other girl died on the news and the story is about her releasing the ashes of her dead friend to quote unquote set her free it's hard to talk about some of this stuff without spoiling it so i'm just gonna leave it at that but that's the gist of the book i'll put up some panels of it this looks or this uh story is pretty great and i highly recommend it and next is the reason i have yet to read a lot of my collection right here this good old series one Piece. Uh, One Piece is the best. It's the freaking best, dude. Okay, so like I've read most of the bigger stories, as you can tell. I'm not like that niche when it comes to some of the series I like. But overall, 
One Piece, I feel like has the most variety, the best world building I've seen in any series. And uh, it knows how to like piece together small, minute details from seasons ago, arcs ago, you know, thousand pages ago. And it puts it back in, makes it fit, and makes it work. Um, there's also, you know, tight references to other Oda works um, that he worked on before One Piece. And the amount of just like, dude, he, he knows how to write. Like the amount of world building he puts into this is amazing. I know I'm talking as a uh, as a newbie, but uh, this has been the bane of my existence for the past uh, year, basically. Um, so as you can see, big fan, big fan, brother. Love it. There's a lot, you know, here you go. Kuma, you got Luffy. These are the hidden detectables. I love these things so much. Uh, here's Chopper. Here's Nami, who uh, my cat is named after, as you can see little Nami shrine. This is Zoro, and if you read the series, they will call him Zolo uh, because of some copyright thing. I don't know, maybe it's Zoro related. I, I really, I'm really not sure. We looked it up before and I still don't even know. Uh, you got Nico Robin, Jimbe, Law, uh, Dolph Domingo. We got uh, all this One Piece stuff, so much One Piece. My life is One Piece. We got Guard Point, Chopper. Brain point chopper. So let me let me go through my my history with this. I'm not on book ten, okay? Do not get it twisted. As you can see, my collection is big, but it is modest. There's not a ton here. However, I would love to own all of One Piece. Guess what book they're on? One o five. They're on a hundred and five. So that's a lot of money. I don't have a lot of money. Otherwise, this would be way more filled out. I don't have a lot of money. So I started collecting these slowly. And this is where I have stopped because I have yet to see book 11 anywhere. I might order on Amazon, but overall my you know collection, this is where I'm at right now. Uh, as for where I'm at in reading it, I'm currently on chapter 715, I think. So I've read, I've read a good amount. You know what I mean? I know these characters. I know half the, ha over half of the story so far, as you can see, because I think there's like 1100 chapters or something. So. I'm getting there, okay? I'm I'm working on it, but it is a massive series and it's taking a long time, but it is freaking amazing. It's one of the best series ever made for sure. I'm, I know I'm like, it's a base take. Okay, cool. Everybody likes One Piece, but overall, I think it's amazing. No no uh, bad talk about One Piece is allowed on this channel. So uh, leave, you know what I mean? If you have anything bad to say about it, I'm kidding. Uh, but overall, love it. It's probably my favorite thing. I'm reading right now and probably will be my favorite thing uh depending on how it ends and you know whatever the journey takes me but so far i'm on 715 can't wait to keep going uh and yeah put your thoughts on one piece in the comments below uh next up is one punch man as you can see i own a lot more of this this is when i was getting into into manga collecting uh one punch one was probably my first one i collected uh or not my first manga but one of the first ones i collected um so the it's the conditions kind of meh and uh, overall, this series, you know, you can't go wrong with One Punch. This is another series I read past the books. Um, so I'm already caught up, but I haven't read, or I guess I'm not caught up. I haven't read the newer stuff, but overall, I am pretty up to date on everything that happens in it. It's about a guy who uh, wanted to become a hero and he basically became too strong to where he can kill things in One Punch. So that's the gist of One Punch. And uh, yeah, he becomes a hero and he, you know, he's just not satisfied by anything until he is. Until, oh, until he is, until he is satisfied by things because there are things in the story that do challenge him, that do make him question uh, whether or not he's as strong as he thinks he is. And it's fantastic. It gets very silly as you can see by, you know, one's other work. This is a, you know, similar art style. They kind of do like the derpy faces and then when he wants to get serious, they'll 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 show it in a, a different art style, kind of. But there's so many characters, dude. And then in the second half of the series, they kind of dive into all the other heroes, and it gets so deep, dude. It's so fucking awesome. And the climax of first major arc is amazing. Definitely recommend. Super funny, super serious, and it just it gives you everything you really want out of an anime. It's it's awesome. So go check that out, uh, One Punch, another base take by Jordy Boy. Ugh. Okay, so next up is Overlord. Uh, this is kind of an isekai, it's about a guy who plays a game so much, and then he gets uh, awoken into the game. And yeah, he basically knows all the characters and shit because he's been playing it damn near all his life. I have yet to continue it very far, but it is uh, pretty good so far. A little comedic. Um, it's about a, you know, he's kind of a nerdy guy. It's, he's a guy who plays games all day, so. Uh, you know, super nerdy, Ugh, look at me. Uh, anyways, 
Ragna Crimson, I heard this series has dragons in it. And they said it's like one of the better books about dragons. So I said, okay, let me get that. And then uh, I've yet to read it. So looking forward to reading this. Not sure what it's about, but it's cool. Rooster Fighter. This is a weird ass series about a rooster who fights. And uh, yeah, he like, he has like, he has sex in this book. He fucking, you know, he's talking shit to other people. The, the fight scenes are insane for some reason. Like he's actually whooping the shit out of people. And it's just a silly, funny manga about a rooster who can kick ass. And I think there's like a couple of these books out now, but this is the only one I have because I don't know if I'm gonna continue it. It's just one of those where I was like, hey, funny, haha, let, let me check it out. So, Sakamoto Days. This is one of the most interesting newer books that are out. It's about a uh, assassin who settles down and becomes married and he kind of becomes this fat grocery store worker. And uh, yeah, come to find out a lot of the assassins, a lot of people associated with the assassins uh, don't know this and they're still coming for him. They're tr trying to kill him and get him out of the picture. He's the best assassin ever, but he just settled down. So he's this fat guy now. So there are times in the series where he turns it up and he starts kicking ass and he turns skinny again. It's really weird, but the, the art in this is amazing. And honestly, in my opinion, this series has some of the absolute best cover art that you can ever see in manga. Like look, this stuff is so good. That's why I left like one of them out like that so you can see it. And then you have like, you know, that one is very colorful. Like the color, color choices on them are amazing. Uh, I can't wait to continue this series, but overall, yeah, this, this series is great. Definitely gets into like some silly territory, but overall it is played very serious and uh, it's just awesome, dude. It's it's such a unique story and I actually hope it gets a, a anime someday, and which I, I would assume it will. Sounds like it's doing very well. Um, but yeah, check out Sakamoto Days, it's amazing. Sensor, this is a weird ass Junji Ito story don't remember what happens in it because I wasn't a big fan of it. But as you can see, creepy shit happens. Did she wander in or was she drawn in? Ooh. Um, but yeah, check it out. It is, it's okay. Uh, definitely better Junji Ito out there, but overall, it's a cool one. Solo Leveling, just got an anime. This one is a manhwa. This is actually not a manga. This is Korean, a manhwa. And uh, yeah, this one is freaking awesome. It's about, uh, you know, hunters like most anime and manga are and nowadays are all oh, these hunter societies and whatnot this is another one of those but uh the main guy is a guy who awakens his power and his power is leveling up in a video game basically so to level up and get stronger he literally goes into dungeons and like farms dungeons to get stronger so he gets more xp and he has like a system where you can like he has an inventory system all kinds of stuff he basically has all this that nobody else can see and nobody else knows that he has this power uh but they just know he's like a strong hunter Definitely recommend checking out Solo Leveling. Uh, I hear the anime is really good. I haven't fully watched it, but my boys did and they said it's awesome. So there's that, uh, Soul Eater. This is a classic series. I have uh, actually watched it all when I was younger and forgot everything. I have bad memory, guys. I'm over 30. Anyways, they have these hardbacks. I was like, hey, that's pretty cool. Let me start collecting these. A lot of these books, and let me, let me remind you guys, I'm not not reading these because I just want to collect and be like a dumbass. I'm gonna read them. I'm more, you know, I'm stuck somewhere that's just blissfully, you know, help me, please, One Piece. All right, so I'll get around to Soul uh, Eater at some point, reread the whole series. But for right now, I'm just gonna collect them. These hardbacks are really nice. So uh, yeah, awesome. This series is Spy Family. It's about a spy who needs a family, so they get him a wife, and she turns out to be an assassin. And then they get a daughter who can, I think, read minds, I believe. I can't remember. I haven't fully finished this, but this is a big series out there right now, uh, Spy Family. But uh, I think it might have stopped for a while, I think, because I haven't seen anything past, I think, book 11 lately. Uh, maybe wrong, put it in the comments if I'm wrong. Which, hey, for this video, you might have to do that a lot. Uh. All right, so next up is Summertime Rendering with these weird ass books, you know what I mean? The, uh, the action in the story looked really good. Basically, the main character loses his friend and he comes back to his hometown to do the funeral, but it leads into like a lot more twists and turns, mystery and horror. And uh, yeah, it just goes on from there. It's apparently really good and I can't wait to continue it. I, w I read a little bit of it so far, but uh, again, <laughs> Tokyo Ghoul is here. Uh, I have yet to 
fully jump into this. I don't know what it's about really, but I, I hear it's a classic. So I kind of bought it to figure out what the, what the fuss was about. Uh, but also gonna take a while because I don't have all the books yet. So we'll, we'll get to that whenever we can. As you can see, uh, Half Price has been giving me some random copies. So I got 12, but uh, once I see the rest, I will be getting them. Okay, next up is Tokyo Revengers. This story is about a kind of that same type of time jumpy stuff that some of the other series do. This story is about a guy who finds out his high school girlfriend was killed and he goes back and uh, much like Summertime Rendering, uh, gets somehow pushed into the past where he has to, he confronts the gang that killed her and has to basically raise in the, rise in the ranks to stop it from ever happening. So uh, as you can see, I've been collecting it, but I have yet to read it all the way through. I'm very early. I did start watching the anime and I got, uh, I would assume a little further than what I did in the books. But uh, overall, it's very interesting. This is one of the series I can't wait to get back to after wah wah. Next up is Tomi by Jujito. This is another classic. As you can see, it's like the same style as like Uzumaki, uh, these books that they kind of came out with. Um, it's an older one, but overall, this is one of the few Juji Itos I've yet to read, next to like Frankenstein out of this collection, I believe. Next up, Transformers. I never thought I would dive into the manga because it's mainly like G1 old stuff, uh, but it looked cool and I found it cheap at half price. So I was like, why not? Let's get into it. Uh, it's again, a series I wouldn't have collected. I am a big Transformers fan, but I don't think I was ready for some of the older stuff. I was more of like an Armada guy and uh, you know, that era of Transformers, but um, hey, it's Transformers. Like I said, I'm a fan of Transformers. So I kind of was like, hey, it's on sale. Let's get it. Undead Unluck. There's a guy who's undead. There's a girl who's unlucky. And he's also a pervert. He grabs her boobs to do special powers. And it's really weird, very questionable on how, uh, you know, how the morals work on it. He gets naked sometimes. It's a weird series, to be honest. I don't know if I'm gonna continue it. I only have two of the books, but uh, from what I've read, it was all right, but it definitely gets into that weird territory. I'm like, I don't know if I want to continue this, but it's cool. It's it's just another, uh, you know, another Shonen Jump story. This is Uzumaki. Obviously one of the best uh, Junji Ito works in my opinion. I love this book so much. And obviously it gets into this, you know, the spiral. What's the spiral about? Da 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 da, spiral. Ah, let me, let me spin stuff. Oh, look, there's a spiral everywhere. Ugh. Uh, there, there's a spiral, my, my sushi. Uh, there's a spiral, there's a spiral on the floor. Oh no. Oh no, there's a spiral on my head. There's a spiral on the butterfly. All right, I'm making fun of it. But overall, the story is great. It's basically about seeing spirals everywhere and it leads into some dark stuff. You see a lot of spirals, but you see things that you don't want to see in spirals like bodies, human bodies. So cool. Junji Ito is a freak of nature, but hey, we love him. We love him. Uh, I got Vinland Saga here. These deluxe books, I love collecting. I have other ones I'm about to show you in a little bit. And uh, yeah, this is Vinland Saga. Uh, very well known, very popular series right now. Uh, I I personally haven't seen a lick of this, so it is gonna be exciting to dive into. But uh, overall, yeah, I hear it's good. I hear it's good, it's Vikings and shit. Can't go wrong with that, right? 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 But yeah, this deluxe edition book uh, is so freaking clean. It's so smooth. Feels like almost leather bound. Uh, didn't know there was a dent in the front of it. That's cool. Hey, didn't know I didn't know I bought broken books. That's cool. Um, yeah, and it's just like oh, great condition. Obviously, the pages are bigger than the actual manga Tonkaban one. So this is going to be a very fun read whenever I get to it. This shit. This I found at Half Price Books for cheap. And I was like, what the hell is this? I've never heard of this in my life. Uh, it looked weird, you know what I mean? It looked super creepy and weird. So I was like, oh, it kind of reminds me of some Juji Ito stuff maybe, I don't know. And the colors obviously are very, you know, I, lo I love the color style. I was like, wow, this is really eye popping, especially on the shelf. I was like, yeah, I'll get it for the collection at least, you know, maybe worst come to worst of it, it's not good. I'll, you know, just have something cool on my shelf. But uh, from the gist of it, it seems like a bunch of short stories involving this little girl. And she's basically uh, in an old folks home. And it's kind of dealing with like the nonsense she deals with in the in the building. But it leads to obviously more and more weird stuff. Um, I don't think it's like a full continuous story, but it is just like a bunch of small stories about it. And uh, it's written and drawn in a way to kind of be like very, very exaggerated. So 
can't wait to dive into this more. This is a weird, very weird book that I was like, I gotta have it, right? Like, look at the, the colors on everything. It's just, it pops on the shelf, brother. It pops on a freaking shelf. Sorry, right. Okay, so that is my main shelf. We're gonna go on to a couple extras now. But yeah, that is the gist of my general manga collection. As I said, there are some series I still need to read because just one piece is consuming my life. But once I get done with that, I will be diving into all these more and more. Some of these I've read halfway, some of these I've read all the way, uh, like Goodnight Pun Pun and One Punch and you know some of these series, Chainsaw. So I'll get to it, okay? Quit, get off my back. This is my dual TV setup. Uh, so whenever I'm playing games with friends, playing some Smash, I can have some music or like a movie or something up here if we wanna like, you know, basically multitask, kind of scratch that TikTok brain, you know what I mean? Have multiple things stimulating. Uh, but overall, I love this setup. If you guys don't have two TVs, invest now, okay? This is the best thing I've ever done. It's amazing, okay? Watch some up here, play some down here, play some down here, watch some over here. Okay, on my other shelf, I have the Switch here. I have a Last of Us 2 statue from the Collector's Edition. I absolutely love this thing. Uh, this is the Soldier 76 statue from the Collector's Edition of Overwatch 1. If you guys are interested in that game, obviously, the game kind of fell off and uh, they kind of ruined Overwatch 2 a little bit from what I hear, so I haven't really played it in a while. But here is one of my favorites. Uh, if you know, you know. This was my favorite before I kind of dove into One Piece. One Piece might be my favorite now. I don't know, I'm still debating in my head. They're both not finished yet, so we'll see. Um, Helsing, no, I'm joking. Berserk, obviously, but we'll get into Helsing first. This is shorter. Uh, I only have book one. Haven't fully dove into Helsing. Another series I needed, you know, dive more into. But uh, yeah, Vampire Hunters, you know what I mean? The books are nice. It has this like cross on here. It's a deluxe, much like the Vinland one and the Berserk one. Here are these books that I got at a Half Price Books. This is a, uh, a set of Japanese manga that I do not what, know what they are. So if you know what they are, please leave it in the comments. I have no idea what the hell this is. Uh, it looked like a slice of life type book. Uh, I figured, oh my God, titties. Um, didn't know that was in there. Okay, maybe not Slice of Life, maybe porn, I don't know. And this is the, you know, one of the most amazing series out there. If you're ever getting into manga, try Berserk. If you're into like adult stuff, this gets into some very heavy stuff. Uh, gets into some R word, some I word, if I can say that. Gets into a lot of stuff that you might want to be careful on, but has one of the biggest, craziest twists, I think, in manga history. Uh, it it goes Game of Thrones on your ass without even knowing. It's insane. The art is amazing. You can see the progression of Mira from the start to the end, where it's kind of like getting progressively better and better and better. And it's just so detailed. The panels are amazing. I might get some tattooed on me. Here are the toys, the figures I got. This is Griffith. I got him as a birthday gift this year from Jay, my brother, shout out Jay. This is Guts. Got it from my boys that went to Japan. Shout out the boys, shout out to Steve. And uh, yeah, that is, uh, this is one of the best series out there. If you have yet to check out Berserk, check it out. Uh, moving over here, I got my Dragon Ball Shrine. I have some Dragon Balls, you know what I mean? If you ever wanna make a wish or something. Bubbles and King Kai. I uh, started putting a bunch of stuff on it from like stuff I got at work, so I was like, cool. And this is a signed figure arts of Vegeta by Chris Sabat himself, which was pretty cool. I got to meet him. Uh, yeah, it was pretty tight. I don't think he liked me, but it could have just been my own suspicion. But it was cool and uh, I'm glad I got to meet him and don't regret a thing, so cool. It's still a work in progress and I'm still growing and you know, getting more and more books and more and more stuff, so. Uh, I'll probably do an update video next year and see what I'm at then. Uh, but for now, this is the amount I have. If you guys liked the video, please leave a like and a sub. And hey, uh, I'll do more like this if you guys like. Just leave a comment below. This is my first time doing a video like this. So if you guys did enjoy it, let me know. And uh, yeah, we'll do more stuff like this. I appreciate you guys. I hope you guys enjoy and have a fantastic day. See ya.